Today, we are in a city that's no Paris, that's no London. It's not the cultural capital of Europe, but nonetheless, it is a city that is the capital of one of the biggest countries in Europe, steeped in history, steeped in culture, steeped in a lot of some of the most important moments in Eastern European history. People might not usually come here, but without a doubt, it might just be one of my favorite cities in the world. This is the city of Bucharest. Today we've woken up to a very sunny and beautiful day. I don't know if you can tell, but the sky is about as blue as it gets. And we're currently in the really, really old area of Progress. This is the old town area right across me on that street. That is Piazza University. I think that's how you pronounce it. And right behind that is the main old town area of Bucharest. We're not gonna start off there for the day though. We're here just now, but we're actually gonna start off a little bit outside of the city in a place that is filled with history and filled with a dark, dark stain on Romania's past. It might not be a place that people commonly go to, but it's definitely a place worth visiting. So let's go ahead and hop on the Bucharest Metro and uh, head to the north of the city. I feel like once I got off the metro here in northern Bucharest, I've emerged into like the Beverly Hills of Bucharest. I've seen Rolls Royce drive around. I've seen rich people having really, really nice coffees and these beautiful, well-kept, like really, really well-kept parks. Um, don't know what the deal is. Maybe this is where all the rich people live. I mean, there's literally a Porsche. Uh, a Porsche right behind me. So I think this may be like the rich people area of Bucharest, but still very interesting to see the contrast in wealth uh, here in Romania. All right, I'm standing right in front of Sheosescu's house. That is literally his house right behind me. There's a permanent exhibition inside. However, they don't let you just go in and roam by yourself. It is part of a guided tour. And the next guided tour is in about over an hour. So we've got some time to kill. There is something else that I do want to see right around here. So let's go down there. We're going to explore that. And then we're going to come back here to Sheroshescu's house. And then we'll go inside for the guided tour. I am currently standing below the Arcul de Triumph, which is the triumphal arch here in Bucharest, Romania. It was built in memory of what happened in World War One. And you might be thinking World War One. Um, I'm thinking more of, you know, France, Germany, not so much Romania, but Romania was very much involved and so was Bulgaria. And so were a lot of these Balkan states during World War One. This is a memorial to all the people who gave up their lives in World War One from Romania. You can tell the signs we're talking about 1916, 1917. This was during World War One. It's not World War Two. It's not during the, the uh, revolution of Romania, but this is something that was almost a century ago. Now, in this arch, there is a stairway that takes you all the way up to the top for a view of the entire city. But from what I understand, it's not open right now. I can't see anything. I can't see anyone to buy a ticket from. So I don't think we can actually go up to the top right now. I heard it's a great view, but I don't think it's open today. I don't know why, but still a great sort of symbolic structure of Romania's contribution to World War I, what an impact it had on the people here and the lives that were taken almost a century ago. All right, we've made it back to Ceausescu's house. Honestly, Romanian names, very difficult for me to pronounce, but um, we are back right in front of the house. I can't wait for the tour to begin. So um, don't know if I'm gonna film anything, but you guys will see in a bit. Before going into the house, we've got to put on these things, these covers on our shoes. I think maybe there's some special tile work or some special carpets in there. So we're not allowed to just step around just with our feet. So they're protecting it really well.
Okay, that might actually be one of the best tours I have ever done before. The mansion itself is incredible. It's beautiful. It's got all this history behind it. And it's like every place inside, every corner is just filled with all these old, beautiful like artworks and souvenirs from different countries and different leaders. Insides are beautiful. They've even got some peacocks. Actually, I can see a peacock right now on the top of a building or something like that. Um, but one of the best tours I think you can get here in Romania, you really get a sense of the history of Ceausescu, where the actual protesters came in, the, the, the walkway and everything, and the stories behind the people who worked there and the people who still work there. I mean, the maids who actually clean this place are the same maids who work under Ceausescu. So it's, it's, it's incredible, the history um, of this place, and it's beautiful on the inside. You learn about the inspirations for certain buildings, you know, Versailles and all that, but highly, highly recommended when you're here. Now, Bucharest doesn't really have like the Danube or the Dniester that runs through it. It's got this little kind of water creek thing that sort of runs through it. And the parliament building that we were at earlier is just right over there in that direction. But you cross over this tiny little creek river-ish thing and you actually get to this part of Bucharest which is where we actually started in the morning because this right here is the old town of Bucharest right on the other side of the river. Well as you can probably see behind me it's the old town of Bucharest is literally just a bunch of restaurants, cafes, bars, lots of very loud music and honestly it's a good vibe if you're here for the nightlife and the partying not a great vibe if you're trying to get the traditional sort of Romanian experience definitely where you would come for nightclubs parties and everything which makes Bucharest actually one of the big party centers here in Eastern Europe but nonetheless, just a place to sort of walk around, but nothing like traditional. It's touristy. It's kind of like all the old towns in like Bratislava and Krakow and everything. It's polished, it's nice, it's clean. And sort of, if you want to mingle with tourists and mingle with other backpackers and stuff, this is probably a place you would come just to have a little bit of fun. Now I mentioned that the old town is just hipster cafes, restaurants, clubs, and all that. But there are some things to see that are pretty interesting. And the first thing to see is right here behind me. This is the Banca Nacional. This is the National Bank. And the reason it's so important is because it was created by this guy called Eugenia Cardinio, something like that. I don't know how to pronounce his name. But there's actually a memorial to him right at the corner of this building. And the reason that he's so important is because he was actually a founder of the Romanian National Bank. He was very close to the Prime Minister and he helped sort of develop the monetary policies that would shape Romania and the idea of creating a central bank um, was was created by him and it's a beautiful big building right in the center of the old town so yes you can see there's like hipster like restaurants and stuff like that there's expensive nice restaurants down there as well but in the middle of it all is this beautiful building which is the national bank and the history behind it like i mentioned is founded by one guy who is still one of the most important guys in romanian history Now, if you listen carefully behind me, you'll hear there are men chanting something. And you might be like, what is that? Well, we've come to one of the oldest monasteries here in Bucharest. And it's actually right in the old town as well, just right around the corner from the National Bank. This is the Stavropoleos Monastery, and we're going to go inside right now. That might actually be one of the most beautiful things I've seen here in Romania. They are currently in mass inside, so they had the prayers. This is a real, still functional monastery. This is not just a, a tourist site that people come to look at the architecture. You know, it is a real monastery that's still being used to this day. Um, new monks, new nuns are all trained here, so it's a functional living monastery. And the crazy thing is that it was developed, it was created in 1729. I mean, that's what, like, four, no, 300 years ago, and it still exists today. The artwork on the outside, I think you can see for yourself how old that artwork is. I mean, that is incredibly 
old, that old Byzantine style of painting, of architecture, that is still around. Now, unfortunately, because they were in session, I wasn't able to film what was on the inside, but if you use your imagination and imagine these types of paintings everywhere, a little bit darker, not really bright, no chandeliers or anything, very simple, but very, very beautiful. The prayers were beautiful, uh, and, and the nuns and everything, all, you know, they're not doing this for a costume. This is the real deal. This is what they do on a daily basis. I just learned this, but apparently Hillary Clinton came here and actually donated money to the church. And on top of that, the paintings inside the church are part of the UNESCO sort of um, patronage to, to, to humanities and the arts inside, because those paintings are truly, truly magnificent. Um, Fortunately, they're in session and don't want to disturb them and it's kind of at the awkward point where people are leaving but it's not really done yet so don't really want to go in but still one of the most beautiful places you've got to see when you're here in Budapest. It's like the more I walk around Bucharest the more churches I see this one looks beautiful and it's a very very old church as well just like the monastery that we saw in fact it seems to be built in a very similar way this right behind me is the Kretzulescu church here in Bucharest it might not look very good on the outside but it's what on the inside that matters so let's go inside and see what's in there well filming and photography is not allowed in here either it's like every church i want to show it's so beautiful the artwork on inside it's just amazing but it's prohibited this church was actually built in 1722 so this is actually older than the monastery that we just saw earlier but it's been redesigned and remodeled in the 1800s and finally it was brought to its original state in the 1900s so this is what it would look like originally when it was built in the 1700s the artwork on the inside is beautiful. It truly is incredible. But I can't show you guys the, the, the beautiful paintings on the inside, which is frustrating. So it just means you gotta come to Bucharest yourself and see it. But the church is beautiful. You can see it's that classic Orthodox style right behind me. And it is truly gorgeous. The surrounding area, you can see like, we've got literally like a mountain of sand here. We've got some building construction going on, but the inside, that's what you really come for. Across from the street of that church earlier is this piazza here. This right here is Piazza Revolute. And this monument right here is the monument to the rebirth of Romania dedicated to the revolution that occurred in 1989. Now this place is really important because this place is also where a lot of protesters came. And a lot of them laid down their lives right here for the independence and freedom of Romania from communist rule. If you look right behind me, you see there are like a black sort of wall on this white wall behind me. That sort of plaque, that middle plaque, contains all the names of the people who sacrificed their lives for the Romanian Revolution. And just to imagine that 30 years ago, this was the site of one of the biggest political upheavals in Eastern Europe to rid themselves of Ceausescu, whose house we visited this morning, and, and to get rid of communism here in Romania. How brave! The people must have been. That's why this monument is erected. That's why this monument here is a symbol, a testament to Romania's commitment to staying away from communism and that past. This building right behind me might just be one of the most important, one of the most impressive buildings here in Bucharest. This is the Roman Ateneu. I don't know how to pronounce it but it is the largest, this massive concert hall right here in the center of Bucharest. Um, now, from what I understand, you can visit it, but it's already too late in the day that they've already closed. It is this massive, beautiful, neoclassical style of the structure, which I remember is built in the 1800s, and it's sort of served as the main concert hall here in Bucharest since then. Now inside they've got shows, they've still got concerts going on, so it's still a living concert hall that's still being used for shows and concerts and mostly for classical music as well. But as of today, we're not allowed to enter. It's closed, we've come a little bit late. But unfortunately, we won't be able to see it today. Well, the sun is setting and as you can see right behind me, the sky is turning a beautiful color. And I thought, you know, I would come to this beautiful place here. It's called Shishmigu Gardens. I think that's what it's called. And there's supposed to be these beautiful lakes and everything. And then 
that's the lake. <laughs> it's completely dried up. I was completely ripped off of what I was expecting, at least from Google Images. Literally not even a single drop of water left. Like, not even a little bit of water. There's nothing. There's absolutely nothing left in there. Um, slightly disappointing. Sure. Yes, what do you we are from say? Romania. Come here, Romania, the best country in the world, in the Europe, Europe. Come here, the best, the best one. Well, you heard it from him. Romania is great. Um, you don't need me to tell you that. But yeah, there's no water in here. There's like literally no water. I thought I'd see like a beautiful sunset with the sun setting over the water, but doesn't exist today. Let's go see what there is around this park. But um, I was hoping to have a really good sunset spot. Guess that's not gonna happen today. Um, there's no water in the lake, so I don't know. Let's see, let's walk around this area. It is a bit of a pretty big park, so uh, let's just go ahead and walk around this garden and see what there is to see. Well, yeah, this garden definitely disappointed, and I'll tell you why, and I'll show you why. Right behind me, that's supposed to be a lake too. <laughs> And there's nothing. There's literally not a single drop of water anywhere. The garden itself, I would have to say, it's kind of like unkempt. Like, you can sort of see, like, there's just like branches everywhere. The grass is kind of yellow and dead. Um, so, not really the most beautiful place to end of the day here in Bucharest, but still, nonetheless, a place where locals come to just to enjoy the vibe and chill. The sun's just setting over there, um, and I don't think we're gonna do anything else here in Bucharest for the rest of the day, so that's gonna be the end of this video. Let's talk about Bucharest here for a little bit, because I do wanna make it clear that Bucharest is a city you should visit. It is the capital city. Bucharest, without a doubt, has some pretty insane clubs and parties that you're not gonna find in Timisoara, you're not gonna find in Moldova, you're not gonna find in Bulgaria or, or Serbia or any of those cities. It truly is, at least here in Romania and, and in this part of the world, one of the biggest clubbing cities, one of the biggest partying cities. I mean, even I met people in Brasov and, and Sigishwara who told me they come to Bucharest to party. So that's what Bucharest really is. When it comes to history, I think the best thing you can see is the Ceausescu house. That is, for me, one of the best things. And most importantly, the guides that run that place are incredibly knowledgeable and they will give you an amazing experience to take back with you. And you really learn about about Ceausescu, you learn about the, the gifts that were given to them, you learn uh, not only about Romania, but Romania's relationships with other countries during those times. Now, the people here, very friendly. They are the nicest people. They're incredibly nice um, and very friendly. I mean, I think, I think you saw earlier at the park earlier and somebody just, you know, wanted to tell you, Romania is the place to come. And I, without a doubt, believe that Romania should be the place that people come to. The Transylvania region is beautiful. Timisoara is beautiful. Bucharest is an amazing city to visit. Anyways, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more food and travel videos. Make sure to pay attention to the channel because we are going to be putting food videos here from Romania as well. And then after that, I'll be showing you guys to our next country here in Eastern Europe and I'm very excited to show you guys that so without further ado I will see you guys on the next one bye guys